Good morning, stupid fast nation. How are y'all doing today? Bear with me for a minute while I get this garage cleaned up so we can get started with the video. <laughs> Okay guys, so as you can see, this garage is a mess. I literally have no room to work on anything. So I think I'm just gonna take a few minutes real quick and clean this up. I did manage to get my workbench cleaned off real quick. Um, what I'd like to do in this video is actually start working on the Banshee. I've been letting that sit the entire summer and basing all of my content off of the actual uh, race car, my notchback. And then, as most of you know, I picked up the S550 chassis as well. I did not get started on that, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, so, yeah, I've actually decided that I'm going to pick up the Banshee project a little bit. I have literally everything I need sitting over there in the corner and some other stuff laying around here that I need for it to put the whole thing together. It is a special project of mine that I've been saving parts for about five years, five to six years, um, and I've literally got probably about four to five thousand dollars in parts sitting for this thing because I've literally just been collecting everything for it. Um, it is going to be a 472 Super Cub stroker engine that's going in it. Six inch extended swing arm. Um, it already had extended A arms and things like that. Extended steering shaft. It does have those little rubber things that stop the vibration from coming through and all that cool stuff. And uh, I did do some videos on it on painting the frame late last year and literally just let this thing sit for the entire year as I worked on the notch back and got that up. As you can see, the uh, drag radial sitting there from the notch and tires from my truck and kids four wheelers and the Raptor. So yeah, this place is just incredibly crazy right now and I haven't been up here lately that often. I just got a lot of other things going on right now. So that's what I'm gonna do real quick. I'm gonna get this all straightened up, get the Banshee up on something like a bucket or, or one of my ATV jacks or something. And then we're gonna probably put the bottom end together today. So sit tight. And voila, there you have it. Uh, garage is clean. I even went ahead and took the liberty of, of adding all these parts onto the clean floor. And as you can see here, there's a lot of uh, new stuff in boxes and packaging. And you can see Weiss Co. and eBay and stuff in plastic wrap. And um, some of you may remember the swing arm I painted last year, the frame video, um, the swing arm. Uh, obviously, I have over 100,000 views on painting that swing arm, which is amazing, honestly. You know, in a year's time for such a small channel I have to get 100,000 views on a video solely based off of painting that swing arm with Rustoleum paint. So awesome, thank you for watching the videos I put out there. As you can see, new radiator, hoses. Um, I've always loved that three row bumper, so I picked up one of those last year. There's the Alba steering stem and the uh, bushings for the handlebars in that. The Super Cub cylinders, the CP pistons. I got some tractor supply uh, lights for the front of this thing, which are huge and I can't wait to install those because they kind of give it that like Baja look which I've always adored on Banshees. Uh, brand new DID chain underneath that is an eBay bolt kit. The previous stock slightly modified engine um, that I originally pulled out of the Banshee. I was stealing some parts off of that and probably selling the rest of it or keeping it for parts or whatever. Um, the original handlebars and the pipes. Also the pipes, uh, these I painted last year as well. These are the rocket pipes that I wanted to patine them a little bit and just keep the like uh, finished steel look. Now I've never been one to enjoy the look of uh, unfinished steel, but I kind of liked it on these pipes, which is why I decided to not chrome plate them, to keep them kind of patine looking, and then throw some uh, satin clear over it so that way it doesn't shine them up too much that you can tell that it's not uh, unfinished look. So we'll see how those turn out when they're on the Banshee. Okay guys, now that we got all that stuff out of the way, let's take a look here. And we'll get started with building the bottom end on this badass banshee. Um, this bottom end I've had sitting for a few years. It's just an old, crappy-ish bottom end. 
Uh, the cases were smacked by a chain, which is very common in Banshee bottom end. Uh, the top case always gets smacked by a chain if it winds up or anything. But I really wanted a set that wasn't compromised, being that uh, it is cast aluminum, and I would fear that in the future, putting down a lot of horsepower with one of these cast uh, blocks, that it might continue to fracture. So I went out and bought a set off eBay last year, which I have those sitting over there in the bin. They're pretty close to new. They're, they're very, very, very good shape. And so we're going to disassemble this, take everything we need out of this, put it in the other one, and then we'll, we'll see where we're at with parts and if we need to take anything off the stock bottom end or if I have enough bottom end sitting here to complete this. So let's get started. Also, something else I wanted to point out. This set also had some JB Weld down by the shifter, so I'm assuming that the chain must have smacked something and cracked it down here as well. I wouldn't doubt if there's any more damage. I see a crack here and over here as well, so I'm assuming that this probably has more damage than anticipated, so that is also another good reason to get rid of these chain wax set and go with another set. Now normally I would not use a pry bar to take these cases apart, but these cases are trash and I'm not reusing them, so I don't really care if I scar them up. The only things that I care about are the goodies inside. The gear sets, the uh, shift drum, and all the shift forks and levers and, and clips and things of that nature, and all the screws and bolts and everything, because I'll need all that stuff for the next motor. Um, quick little tip, when I take things apart, what I like to do is make sure I put everything in sequential order with how it goes and um, that way it's very very easy to put it back together I like to just keep everything nice and neat and together and that we don't have to worry about it also be aware of all the little clips and things on the ends of these bearings so you don't lose any of that because it'd be a shame if you put this back together missing that stuff and then you spin a bearing inside the case and you're leaking oil and all that crazy stuff so keep that in mind <laughs> Now some of these screws are very very hard to break and so what I do is I have an impact driver and uh, for these ones that are really hard to break sometimes I'll heat them up sometimes I won't I'll try to break it first without heating it up but I'll heat them up and that way the aluminum expands and then I'll use this punch driver to get them loose these things work awesome they're really cheap on uh, eBay so I think mine was like 15 bucks shipped little propane torch from Walmart this thing was like three bucks for this and another ten for the torch itself and I'll just heat the aluminum around it and not catch everything on fire. Alright guys, so I'm trying something new. Um, this angle is a little different from what you guys are probably used to. This is actually like a head strap thing. So I'm hoping that <laughs> this is really encapsulating. Today, Junior! <laughs> everything that we're working on here and um we'll give it a shot and see if not if it's not usable footage then it's whatever um i'll go back and redo whatever i can anyways this bolt here was a bit of a problem i really 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 had to heat that one up and uh this punch actually destroyed it a little bit so i just kind of kept hitting down on it with the hammer heating it up and finally broke this one loose sometimes these can be a pain in the arse to get out but once they get out it's freedom, freedom. you know everything just comes right out then so um, I did go ahead and remove this one shifter shaft right here <clears throat> for two of the forks I believe those are forks one and two 
Um, and then you have fork three here. Something like that. So yeah, you remove this fork shaft here. Just tap it from the back. Now you'll notice once you get that uh, out, a little piece is going to fall out. This is actually the plug for the block itself. Um, these, well, if lo don't lose it, but it, uh, it actually plugs the ends of the block here. And that's kind of like your metal to metal seal to stop fluids from getting out. So that's all that does for you. And then that just pushes out. And we just keep this little guy over here with the rest of the gear set. And then we pull the shift drum out. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, disassembling a bottom end. It's pretty straightforward. These things are super, super easy to work on. Um, I've built quite a few of them already. I've owned this Banshee for, like I said, probably five or six years now at least. And I've rebuilt it a couple times. And I just never did anything this wild before. So it's actually pretty exciting until we see this thing come together. And I'm hoping to make, you know, on the ass dyno around 100 horsepower or so. Um, the 472 motor should put out a lot of horsepower, but it'll be like mid-range-ish. It won't be like super top end or super low end. The port setup on it, it's real good for like mid to sort of high, especially with the rocket pipes too. So hopefully I, I spec'd everything out for what I wanted to, to do in my build. And uh, that would be like a semi-trail slash get on it and rip ass quad, you know, so... <laughs> So, all right, let's grab the other bottom end. We'll set that down on the bench, and then we'll get started with reassembling that one. Um, there is some things we have to do to the other one before we can start assembling it, which I'll get into that in a second. Um, so here's the new set of cases that we're going to be working with. I mean, I know they're not new, and they were in very, very nice, clean condition until I let them set for six years. Um, I, did, I did have these a very long time. Um, as you can see, everything is now starting to corrode little bits here and there. So we'll go ahead and clean all that stuff up real good. Um, I have some brake fluid cleaner. We'll clean everything up real good. We'll start greasing up all the races and stuff like that before we install anything. Also, before we can put cylinders in this thing, I have to gasket match where the cylinders go because the 472 has that bigger, that much bigger of a cylinder that uh, these have to be opened up a little bit. I'm also going to open up the uh, bearing ports a little bit. Actually, there's only uh, one, two, three, four of them. And those help the oil flow down into the bearings. Um, because this thing is going to be turning at a very, very fast rate of uh, RPM. And, you know, Banshee scream. So I definitely want the bearings to have enough oil. So I'm going to open those up a little bit too. So we're going to get these opened up as well as the uh, cylinder entrances as well. Um, also, here's a really good tip for what to do with your old cases. Um, I'll show you exactly what you can do with these when you're done with them. Just throw them right in the trash because they're garbage, especially ones like those. So rest in peace cases. All right, so let's get started cleaning these things up. we got that case cleaned up pretty good I'm gonna blow this off and wipe it off um, I do see some pitting on the insides here where the crank was that's okay we cleaned it up pretty good with the wire wheel looks like they may have uh, bent a rod or something at some point or threw a bearing and they were nicking the bottom of this on um, this side just has some light pitting in it that's okay none of that's gonna affect anything on the horsepower uh, or rotating assembly um, what we're gonna do now is take all of these bolts out of this one um, because I have extended ones for the next case that are, uh, will give it more clamping force. I have longer studs. The cylinder base is actually a lot longer, so you have to go out and get adapters for certain ones, and I think they're these two, actually. And the rest actually might be usable. I don't know. We'll have to see when we get the cylinder placed on it. Okay, guys, so uh, a lot of you have watched a great deal of my content, and if you did, you would know that I like my videos to be whole and complete. And usually everything I do is from start to finish. But on this one, 
since I haven't had a lot of time to go ahead and make individual videos and lengths of time uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of this opportunity now I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about here okay so I'm um, using a die grinder and an aluminum bit and as you can see I, I uh, actually marked where I need to take off for the size of these cylinders here okay so I took a uh, dial caliper a digital a digital caliper and uh, measured the outside of the cylinder on both of them and then I went ahead and centered this the best I could and then marked it and I gave myself if you're lucky a few thousandths extra on the edge all the way around so that way it would be a circle and that they, these would fit in uh, nice not too snug but uh, just enough that they should slide in and still provide structure for the cylinders themselves now this bit sucks um, I've had this sitting in the box for a long time, so it has taken me forever to get through this aluminum. So I need to buy extra bits, but I don't have time to finish this video this week. And so if I don't end the video here, I will not be able to get this video posted for at least another week. And I definitely want to edit and post this so that we can continue this in a part series of uh, building this Banshee. And then we can watch the whole thing envelop from start to finish. Um, I did go ahead and take my base gasket, set that on, and then marked my uh, transfer ports here and everything. And that way, uh, everything will flow very nicely when it's put back together. Everything will line up nicely with the bottoms of the cylinders, and everything should slide in nice. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. We got the bottom case cleaned up. We got a lot of stuff ready to put back in the case, and we got part of the porting done. So we're going to go ahead and get a bit next week, finish this up, and then we'll start part two of this series. Also, guys, I forgot to mention, we hit a 1,000 subscribers. Uh, I was very excited to see that. It was on my girlfriend's birthday that we hit it. She was also extremely excited. So thank you guys for always watching the content. If you enjoy the content, give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Any future content you want to see. Um, you guys know we have the S550 chassis. We have four-wheelers. I have the notchback. I have two motors for the notchback that I'm not sure which one I want to put in yet. I'll get into that in the next video and uh, we can talk briefly about that and make a decision on which one we want to put in the notch back for spring. There's also a few other little things I want to do to it. Maybe not so little, but I definitely want to get that car ready for spring at some point. But for now, let's focus on the Banshee. Um, S550 content still coming soon. I know that I've said that for probably four videos, but definitely coming soon. So keep an eye out for that as well. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, take a look at the outro. Some of my buddies' races are in the outro. Um, I'm always extremely happy to throw clips up in the outro of people that race with me and are out there doing stuff and whatnot. So enjoy. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.